So if you remember, uh, if we go over here to our Solution Explorer, we'll see we already created a contact item view earlier. So we want to double click that and we want to go down here to the XAML. And since this is going to be rather small, we're going to change the design height here so we can get a better idea of what it'll look like. We'll change the height to 75 and we'll change the width to 250. So going down here to the content, let's set up some grid columns here. Grid column definitions. Uh, grid co uh, rather column definition and we're going to do two of these as well and like earlier we want to set the first column width here we're going to set it to 50 this is going to be where the profile image is displayed next we're going to set up an image control here uh, we're going to put it in the grid column 0 uh, we're going to give it a margin of let's say 5 so the profile image isn't hugging the entire control and then we're gonna set up a source, so where this image is coming from. Uh, we're going to do a binding, and we're going to bind to the contacts image path. Now mind you, in the list view, uh, the item, the data context of this view is going to be of each individual item since we're setting this in the data template. However, we may not always have uh, an actual image set up for the contact. So what we wanna do is we wanna create a fallback value and uh, we'll leave this empty for now. And then set up a target null value. Now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna actually back up, we're gonna go to our app.xaml. And right here uh, under our data template that we created earlier, we're actually going to set up a bitmap image. We're going to give it a key, so x key default contact image. And then we're going to set up a URI source here, close that off. And if we select it here and we go down over to our properties, uh, we'll see that we have all of our images here for the base URI. And we want to select, let's find it, the default contact PNG. Going back over here, we can see our, now we have a static resource uh, set up for a bitmap image. Uh, did make a little mistake right here. We don't want this to be base URI. So I'm just gonna copy the link there, erase, and put this in the URI source. So now we actually have a static resource to get this image. So uh, going back over here to our contact item view, and going back down to our XAML, uh, we can come down here to our fallback value and call a static resource default contact image. And for the target null, we can also do the same, default contact image. And we're going to close off our image. And now if we look over here at our view, uh, we see that we have a little default image here. And on the right will be the uh, contact's name. So going back down to our XAML. Next, we want to set up a stack panel. Going to give it in the grid dot column one. Again, we're gonna give it a margin of five so it doesn't look off or offset from the image. And we're going to give it a vertical alignment of center so it's not hugging the top or the bottom. We want it nice in the middle. Close off the stack panel. Then lastly, we want a label here and we will give it a font size, let's say of 18 so it's a little bigger. And then we're going to have the content of this label binding to the name of the contact uh, object. And so we can get a better idea here. We'll give it a fallback value of n slash a for no answer. And if we go up here to our design, uh, our designer, we can see that we have the, this is basically what it's gonna look like. We'll have an image over here on the left and then the uh, contact's name will be on the right. So that being said, we're gonna go back over here to our book view going to go back down to the XAML. And now in our data template here is where we want to plug in the view we just made. Uh, however, that is in a different folder. So we want to scroll up here to our XML namespaces. Do XMLNS uh, V short for views. Do CLR namespace, simple contact view, and we'll find the views folder. So now when we just scroll back down here real fast, uh, we'll get the prefix V and we'll add in contact item view. 
and close that off. Now, lastly, uh, because we this is the list view on the left, we want to, for later, set up a grid here. So grid.column1. And we're just going to set this grid up so we can later use it to uh, plug in another view for the details. So uh, one last thing we want to do is go over here to our main window. I actually almost forgot this. And uh, where we have our favorite and contacts, uh, we want to go down here to our XAML. We want to find those buttons. We'll start here with our uh, contacts button. And we want to set up a command binding here. So we'll do command binding. And we'll bind it to the load contacts command. However, uh, we are binding here to the app view model. So instead, uh, if you look over here, at our, let's go to our uh, app view model. Uh, you see we're binded to the app view model here. Uh, what we want is to go to the book view model. So going back to our main window and going down here, we want to go to the book VM and then the load contacts command. As you see, IntelliSense will show us that as well. So now if we run our application, and now when our application is running, if we select the contacts button, it should execute the command. And we see here that our contacts and our data uh, pop up. Now when we select them, of course, we're not getting any details over here on the right because we haven't set that just up yet. Uh, so hopefully we'll get to that in the next video. All right, guys, so thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully we're going to, like I mentioned, you can bind the favorite contacts as we uh, see down here. Uh, you can set up the binding on your own. Should be simple. Uh, next, we're going to set up working on details and maybe fixing some other minor issues.